Hey, hi everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas with what's becoming my constant companion, Cascade the dog. Good guardian dog. Hey, welcome to part three in the wind. I hope you can hear me. I, I don't know until I edit this, but of course the wind just came up as I turned this on. It's uncanny. Anyway, welcome to part three of building the guest bedroom wall. This episode, or this installment, is going to be just pretty much strictly about polishing the limestone uh, slabs that are going to make up the casements, the casements, and the lintel on that wall, which I showed you in the other episode. So, I've got everything all set up here behind me. I have to leave you where you are because this thing splashes like crazy. I'm going to turn into a muddy mess. I'm going to get cold. I'm going to be uncomfortable. It's going to get on my shoes. And I'll explain to you why. And let me explain why I'm going to turn into a muddy mess. This is the wet polisher. And the wet polisher has a hose attached to it that attaches to my garden hose. And then I'll, I control the uh, pressure by using a garden nozzle. Now I have to do that for a reason, and I'll show you that reason in a minute. I have to use the garden uh, the garden spray nozzle on this because this kit that I bought, this um, uh, wet polishing kit, was one of those, again, like I always complain about. It was, it was cheap Chinese junk. Now, you know, I, I wish somebody would get across to the people in China that, yes, it's okay to make us stuff that, that's less expensive. But don't make shit. Don't make crap that we can't use that breaks right after we buy it. Because that doesn't help anybody except except the people on top of the food chain in China. It doesn't even help with what effectively is slave labor over there that's working for a couple bucks a day. But we can't do it. So my polishing kit was $124. I bought it uh, almost three years ago. $124. Bucks came right out of China, which I no longer do. I only buy things that I can buy from the U.S. But it came right out of China, and it came with these pads. It's a, um, it's a four inch kit, and it comes with these diamond encrusted pads. I'm gonna show you up close. It came with eight, uh, it actually came with 10 of these, and they go, like I said in the earlier video, from a 50 grit all the way to a 6,000. I'm holding the 6,000 in my hand, and of course they double 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1,500 for some reason, 3,000, 6,000. Now, I just added this up. I've used these, and you can tell they're a little cheap. This is actually some kind of a vinyl or plastic that's got the diamond in uh, the diamond dust put in it very very cheap and chintzy so you would think but I have done and I just added it all up I've done over hundred and forty square feet of uh, polishing on these limestone slabs with this set and finally the three that get used the most have shown some wear one's unusable and two are okay for now so I'm using them up so of course, I make a lot of mistakes, as I laugh about, but I make a lot of mistakes. Most of the time, honestly, because I'm trying to think too far ahead. So you can see the difference in size here. I bought these six-inch pads by mistake. And I also bought uh, three-inch um, three pads by mistake. Can't use the three-inch. But the six-inch I can use uh, because what happens is... I'll turn this over. When you get it centered there, you've got this, you've got this much hanging out. Well, when you're putting the pressure on this pad, you can sometimes create little valleys and ripples. And especially true with the 50, 100, and 200 grit. This doesn't create the ripples because even though you're pressing hard in the center, it softens up out here. So I guess what I'm getting at is if you're going to get one, by all means, you know, get a four inch or a six inch, but then kick up the pads to the next size. So in other words, the way that wind's gotten stiff. In other words, if you have a four inch, buy pads for a six inch and you'll be a lot happier. Now that's a voice of experience here. But anyway, we've got these. Um, and it's just, it's not rocket science. I'm going to do each slab eight times. And when I'm done with the eighth time, I'll have that satin finish. Now I'd mentioned in the other video that, I, that it was probably the weather why that slab didn't shine like satin. 
it just was still damp and it had to dry out. Once it dried up, it had a beautiful shine to it. You can maintain that shine by sealing the limestone, which I don't do here, and it just takes on kind of a um, semi-gloss look, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Uh, sometimes semi-gloss to a, almost a flat uh, sheen, and th that's okay for outside and everything here that we do. When we go ahead and do the kitchen countertops, we're going to we're going to actually seal it, and then we'll have to seal it about every six months. But we're ready to get started. I've got the two casements, the two side casements to do, and the lintel. So I'm going to do all three with the 50, then change and do all three with the 100 and all the way up to the 6,000. Um, I'm going to film most of it and then try to try to put it in if using the uh, YouTube editor, try to get it at like five or six speed uh, so you can see the whole process in you know two two minutes really uh, that's what my hope is but if I can't do it I'm telling you now uh, if I can't do it then I'm just gonna cut 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 and so let's get started well I'm gonna be a little loud because I don't know what the wind is doing it keeps coming up and going down but I'm all set here to get started so for those of you that that um, are interested ah, I just gouged my leg for those of you that are interested in uh, in polishing stone like this, and maybe were afraid of it like I was, uh, hey, this whole system makes it simple. 125 bucks for this uh, for this rig, and the stone here. You know, I didn't have a lot of money in the stone, so for 150 dollars, you can educate yourself on how to do it, and then decide if you like it, and go from there. So they gave me a water valve up on top of this uh, grinder that uh, promptly failed because guess what? It was made in China. So I have to adjust it with the garden hose. That's why I use it. And I'm going to have to first turn the water on. Now, if you saw my video on rainwater catchment, you know that our water is rainwater catchment. And this being the end of January is the middle of our dry season. So we're getting a little bit low on water. Now we're not low to the point of rationing, but you know, I don't have 7,000 gallons of water anymore. I've only got about 3,500, something like that, maybe 4,000. But anyway, this whole process should take about 60 gallons of water. What I do is I set the, uh, I set this, and I don't need a lot of water uh, on, the fi on the first few. I need a lot of water on the 3,000 and the 6,000. So that's too much water. We're gonna back it off. Actually, I got to back it off quite a bit. That would run through 500 gallons of water in the time I'm going to be doing this. So, bring it up just a little. That's too much. Right about there. Actually, guys, it's pretty easy. That stream is about what yours is going to be when you're not. Um, when you don't have to go all that bad. There we go. So that's just about right. The reason for the le uh, less water, I'm going to put it over here. The reason for a little bit slower stream right now is most of the abrasion, and this is true with knife sharpening too, most of the abrasion happens um, by the interaction of the dust with the um, with the stone, not so much the um, not so much the diamond dust. We'll go a little faster once I'm sure I've got this set right. I believe that's just about right. I'm going to start with the lintel. Uh, always, I'll start with the lintel and then do the casements because the lintel is going to be more obvious than the casements. Uh, Someone may be concerned about electricity and water, that's a valid point, but this uh, polisher does have a, um, a break on it. When it senses that there's a problem, it will pop the fuse. So here we go at 50 grit. Here we go at 50 grit. Now here we go at 50 grit. because I'm going to tell you that 50 grit is the most important one. That's the one that's taking off the most. Now 100 is going to take off almost as much. 
but the 50 grit's gonna take off a lot of surface. So this is the one where you're gonna use a little bit of pressure. You don't use a lot of pressure, but use a little bit of pressure. And any gouges or those striations I mentioned, any of those gouges and striations, this is when you try to get rid of them all. If you get a slight bit of, of, of valleying, that's gonna be okay, but because you wanna get all those marks out, you get rid of the valleying when you go to the bigger it occurred to me that I better show you what these look like when you start. So here is the wheel marks or the blade marks right here. There's a scratch across here. There is some um, pitting that was natural in the stone there. And you can see it's had a real dull kind of a rough finish. Almost like a freshly cut piece of wood when you cut it on a, you know, with a, a, a great big um, lumberjack saw. That's what we're starting with, and we're going to end up with a satin finish. I think you get the general idea of how how the polishing process goes and it's just that boring little bit there times eight that I have to do so I won't bore you any more with it but I do want to show you what happened after the 50 grit uh, after 50 grit dried a little bit uh, so let me show you that and then we'll come back and I'll show you the finished product in a bit well, I'm actually trying to take my shadow off of it I don't know if the shadow is good or bad but Right in here on this slab were all those saw marks, and you can see those saw marks are gone. Now let's back up a bit. My shadow's going to come in. Uh, oops. Now that is smooth right there. This is the second piece one with my shadow. And the lintel, and I won't be able to get rid of my shadow on the lintel, it's not quite dry. We don't want them to dry out. I let it dry out so I can show you this. Uh, the saw marks are gone, the gouges. Now coming back to this first casement, right in here there was a deep gouge. You can see I got rid of that deep gouge took it right out. Uh, and now from here on in, we're gonna take a little bit more and a little bit more off, and then the last three we'll be polishing with a little bit more water. I'll probably increase the flow by, um, oh, about 50% there. So um, I'll come back and show you. It'll be a couple hours, and I will be a sore boy, because that's hard to bend over at my age to do this for you know an hour and a half or two hours at a time. So here we go. The uh, slabs are all finished, and I wanted to show off the um, inclusions and all the color that you get when you polish one of these up. This is the attraction. Let me see if I can get real close here. See all those inclusions? Little bits of color, a little There are fossils occasionally in here, and I would doubt that a lot of this, of course, I guess limestone is all microscopic fossils. But um, you get the colors, you get whatever little organic or harder rock or whatever was included in there. You see the beauty right there. Now this is one of the casements. I fussed over the lintel a little bit more. Uh, and you see the lintel has kind of got a two-tone to it. That's not the way I polished it. That's just the way the stone came out. And again, that's the attraction of natural stone. That's the attraction of looter stone. Again, we'll get right down here on top of some of these inclusions. Now on all three of these, the two casements and the um, lintel slab here, I only polished up to the groove. So if you look ahead, especially right here, you can still see the uh, saw marks behind there. And I left those. Those are natural. They're going to be on the outside of the window and, and not, uh, not that noticeable. So, And I said natural. That's not what I meant. They're just, they're not a big deal. Um, but you can see the contrast between the saw marks there 
and when you come down here to all these inclusions in the color and I'll show it to you one more time when it dries up in a couple hours um, in fact I'm gonna go and relax and pick up my tools and come back then uh, a couple hours when it's dry and show you well it's been a couple of hours and it's uh, dried up some let's take a look and see if we've got that satin finish remember what it looked like when I started let's see what we got now that's what we're looking for right there you see the shine with the sun hitting it. Now that's one of the casements. The, um, the lintel hasn't quite dried yet, but to the touch, it feels, well, uh, you know, it, it feels like satin or like silk. It's just real smooth and nice to the touch. You know, you've got, there's a couple of spots like this one right here where there's a natural hole, and of course that feels like a natural hole, but other than that, what, what, um, what, I've, what I've polished feels great and it's gonna look good, and tomorrow we are going to put it up, and that's gonna be kind of fun. Let me tell you about that. Well, I've got an area, uh, I've got to clean the area where I had the window set up like I showed in, in part two. I've got to clear this whole area out so I can get the pickup truck in there. And uh, I figured out a way where Debbie and I together can lift this 300 pound lintel up and get it in place and really assemble the whole casement and window so that it's all in one place. One, blah, so it's all one piece, I'll get it out yet. Um, and we're gonna do that tomorrow. That'll be the whole video for tomorrow, just like this was the whole video for today. It's all part of building this wall. It's all part of what I gotta do to build the wall. So uh, tune in tomorrow and see if I drop the uh, drop the lintel on my head or drop it on Debbie's head or whether we're successful. And until then, it's Robert Earl out here in far west Texas at the Eco Ranch saying, we'll see you later.